and welcome to the latest episode of Entre News. I'm Dr. J.D. LaRock, the president and CEO of Nifty, the network for teaching entrepreneurship. And welcome back to our recurring interview series where I chat with Nifty students, alumni, educators, entrepreneurs, and industry leaders to discuss all the facets of the entrepreneurial journey from the classroom to the corner office. April is National Volunteer Month, and so I am very pleased to welcome two of our incredible Nifty volunteers, each of whom will be recognized as the Nifty Volunteer of the Year in their respective regions at our upcoming Regional Youth Entrepreneurship Challenges. First, let me introduce Nikki Trandaliva. She is the market president at BMO, and we also have with us Andy Bepath, who's business banking officer at Brookline Bank. Welcome, Nikki. Welcome, Andy. Thank Good morning. So I would love to start out by hearing from each of you about just your respective organizations and your roles there. Uh, so Nikki, let's start with you. BMO has been a great supporter of Nifty through programs like our World Series of Innovation competition. Tell us about your role there. What's it like? Well, uh, for over 200 years, BMO has been the bank of aiming higher. We have a history of adapting, evolving, and winning in the face of challenge. So our commitment with Nifty and the World Series of Innovations is part of our company's purpose, and that is to grow the good in business and life. My role at BMO, I'm a market president. I manage the retail branches in San Francisco, Peninsula, and Marin. We have the opportunity to be involved in the community where we work and live, and that's my greatest passion. Um, to be in the community and partner with Nifty has been amazing. That's fantastic. And BMO's everywhere. I was just yeah. in Maine to view the to the total solar eclipse. And uh, we crossed the border into Canada and there was a BMO branch. So it really is a, a, a global bank. Uh, thank you so much for that. Andy, tell us a little bit more about Brookline Bank and how you got involved there. I've been in banking for almost 20 years now. Um, I joined Brookline Bank about five years ago. Brooklyn Bank is a community bank we were founded in 1871. So we've been around for 150 years. We service both commercial and residential customers. And through our holding company, Brooklyn Bank Corp, uh, we have a presence in Rhode Island, New York, and Massachusetts. You know, one thing that drew me to Brooklyn Bank is that personal connection that it has with its customers. So I think that really goes a long way in building relationships. And living in Massachusetts, as I do, I see Brookline Banks all the time as well. Well, congratulations to both of you on receiving the Volunteer of the Year Award. You know, our research shows that Nifty volunteers really love working with our students. And they say that they learn new things, they help develop themselves, and they expand their personal values as some of the top motivations for volunteering. Nikki, you personally have devoted over 200 hours of your time in the last five years, volunteering as a business plan coach and judge and mentor for Nifty students. What do you like about volunteering? What keeps you coming back? <laughs> well, uh, you have to have passion in it to do it and return again and again. Um, I have to say, um, my mother's always taught me and said that when you can give, give generously. Uh, whether you give monetary or through volunteering, we give because we care. I live in a community where I think I can make an impact to, you know, not to young people, but to other um, economic needs. But I'm proud to support the education program uh, because I think the time we invest in the students today will help create greater leaders and our future CEOs. So if I can make an impact in that, I would like to be part of their journey. Uh, I return every time with excitement because I get to see how the student grows throughout the program. And it's very rewarding to know and, and see that what I, my feedback to them has helped this individual progress through the program. So that was very joyful. We talk all the time about the learning journey of our students and our volunteers talk all the time about working with students who might might be shy and maybe even acted like they didn't want to be a yeah. part of the Nifty program. But by the end of the, the experience, they they totally change and come out of their shell and they're presenting and they're excited. And the volunteers have a lot to do with that. Andy, you've been volunteering with Nifty since 2018 when you were working at Santander. But 
And this is super interesting. You are also a Nifty alumnus. You took the Nifty program as a student. So first, take us back to your days as a student in the Nifty classroom. Uh, what was your business? Where did you take the Nifty course? And curious to know, as a student, what did those volunteer mentors who came to your classroom mean to you? I took the Nifty program back in 1996, a long time ago. I immigrated from Trinidad um, when I was 11 years old. My dad started his own small business, so I had experience to entrepreneurship at a young age, but I really didn't understand what it was. While I was in high school, Nifty reached out to our school and said, hey, we have this wonderful program. We're looking for a select few students to join. Would you be interested? And my teacher selected maybe four or five of us from Hyde Park High School. They actually took us out to Babson College, which is the number one college for entrepreneurship. So going through the Nifty, I was able to actually spend two weeks at Babson College getting training from all the volunteers, all the teachers from Nifty, from a marketing plan to the, fin the financials to startup costs, and then to actually make a presentation. And the support was was overwhelming. It opened up my eyes. Like, although I come from a family that had their own business, I really didn't know what entrepreneurship was till I went through Nifty. Like, as you guys say, you truly do ignite that fire within these young individuals. And honestly, while I stepped away from Nifty a couple of years and I got re-engaged at Santander, seeing those kids, I'm like, the passion that they have was amazing. And I'm like, I had that when I was in high school. And mm -hmm. it was truly, it was awe-inspiring just to see the, the look on these kids and the enthusiasm and the passion that they have. Because I feel as we grow, that that passion, that fire, it diminishes. But to see fresh faces and the impact that we're making on them, that's probably the most rewarding thing I've ever done. That's so cool for you to be able to connect your experience as a Nifty student and then describe what it's like to be on the other side of the table as a volunteer now, as you just did. That's amazing. And, you know, it 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 yeah. corresponds to what our research shows. Our research shows that Nifty alumni say that they're Volunteer connections are their favorite part of the Nifty experience, and I can think of many examples where students stay in touch with their volunteer mentors for 10, 20 years and continue to have a supportive relationship. So the work that each of you are doing truly it has a lasting impact. Nikki, what is, uh, what is a piece of advice that you give to Nifty students that you work with? You know, I've, I've shared this with them, but I'll share it again. And, you know, it depends on where the stages they're in. But in for the most part, what we've seen from the students is they're, they're getting out of their comfort zone, trying to explore something different. Uh, when they have a little passion and then they continue to grow into more, more passionate about their program. Um, but I would say to the students that take your time to build your ideas Um Practice it. You practice and practice over again. Encourage feedback. Sometimes it's hard to hear feedback that you might not like, but it helps you improve. It helps you to, to progress to it better, to move your plan forward. And it is okay to make mistakes. It's just this life. We learn from it. Um, we get better at each time, and that's how it helps us achieve our goals. You know, in life, personally, or at work, we push ourselves every day so we can do better today than we were yesterday. So I would say that to them. You've got this. Don't worry. It's nervous right now, but we're here to help you. Awesome. Great pieces of advice. And I particularly like that first piece. Practice, practice. I always tell our Nifty students, you know, you, you shouldn't expect to have a perfect fully formed business right at the start. Start yeah. with one step and then add another step and add another step. And sometimes you might go back, but nothing ever starts out as a finished product. You always have to develop it. Andy, is there a go-to piece of advice uh, that you tend to give to students? I think one thing I always tell them is to keep that passion that you have, because at the end of the day, there are going to be some hills to climb. There are going to be tough situations. But if you remember what your mission statement or what your goal is, that will always get through your rough patches. Remember what you're shooting for. Remember why you came up with this idea, why you came up with that service, because that's going to get you through the peaks and valleys. So I think that's my number one advice, to, to never lose that fire that you have. That's fantastic. Keep on trying. 
per, uh, pivot and persevere, as we say at Nifty. You know, you have obviously, uh, you know, the Nifty program model well. I'm sure you've heard us talk about the entrepreneurial mindset and all of its characteristics like creativity and adaptability, comfort with risk, spotting opportunities. Uh, I'd love to ask each of you, is there an entrepreneurial mindset characteristic that has been particularly important to you in your own professional journey? Nikki, let's start with you. Uh, yes. To, for my own professional journeys, I would say the most important skills um, or behaviors, I would say, too. There's several. You, collectively, over the years, you build onto it and you, 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 you become master in a certain area as you continue your learnings. Um, so I would say confidence, patience, positive attitude, and most importantly, is active listening. Um, in a finance world, we must be active listeners uh, and have the patience when helping our clients with their financial progress. Our knowledge help us gain more confidence in everything we do. Um, so never stop learning. Our, our journeys never stop. We're going to keep learning because the moment we think we know everything, we're not allowing ourselves to absorb or master new skills. So have a positive mindset will help us through tough challenges. So that will be the first part. But we work on the others as we continue on. Absolutely. Andy, how about you? Any any particular entrepreneurial mindset skills or characteristics that have been particularly uh, useful for you in your in your own uh, uh, professional journey? I would definitely have to say adaptability, um, you know, coming from being a branch manager to being a business development officer. I've worked with, you know, residential situations plus commercial customers, and it's always being able to pivot and adapt to each individual's needs. You know, one customer might have a need for this product versus that product. And you have to be able to adapt and provide the right solution for them. Being business bankers in the last couple of years, dealing with the pandemic and the PPP situations and the EIDL, a lot of people needed that help. And you know, you had to be that trusted person. You had to be able to be quick on your feet, you know, think really fast. How do you adapt to a new system? How do you go through this process of applying? How do you reach out to these different people and to meet all their needs? So I think the entrepreneurial mindset really came into play uh, during the pandemic and throughout my career, definitely being adaptable and, you know, building connections. I can totally see how adaptability was crucial during the pandemic when banks like both of yours were called upon to do all sorts yeah. of new things all of a sudden. And it's such a massive scale. That's a, that's an amazing answer. Well, listen, I want to thank you really sincerely for all of the time that you take uh, to be with our students and to shape their journeys. Uh, it's volunteers like you who really make Nifty what it is. And I'm not kidding when I say that our learners, uh, they will talk 10, 15, 20 years later about the valuable mentorship and guidance that our corporate and community volunteers provided. So you are two shiny examples of that. And the difference that you make can be counted in the lives that you are changing. So thank you on behalf of all of us in the Nifty community for what you're doing. And I hope that I have the chance to see you soon as I make the rounds for our regional competitions uh, this spring. Thank you both. Any last words you'd like to add before we break? Go Nifty. <laughs> Fantastic. Keep driving. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you both. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to another episode of Entre News. I'm Dr. J.D. LaRock, and we'll see you next time.